My name is Livia Hubert, and for those of you who don't know me, I coordinate the English as a Second Language program. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces, so um, welcome and thank you for being here on this rainy day. Um, so we're all gonna feel cozy together. Uh, before we get started, I would like for all of you to join me in singing happy birthday to our speaker today, Carolyn Candy. <laughs> One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carolyn. Happy birthday to you. I didn't mean to embarrass you, but you deserve it. She is um, a great person, friend, mom. She does it all. She's a multitasker. Um, she's been working here at BCC for about eight years now, and she teaches ESL, she teaches English, and she also teaches CSS. Uh, so please help me welcome our speaker today, Ms. Carolyn Kenny. Is it fun? Yes. Yes. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. What makes socializing fun? How do you need to feel for it to be fun? Very good. When you feel comfortable, it's fun. When you feel uncomfortable, how is it? Oh, awkward, right? Raise your hand if you have ever felt uncomfortable in a social situation. Wow, some of you, I'm impressed you're not raising your hand. For most of us, it's kind of a typical thing that happens, to some of us more than others. Um, so we're going to start out just with kind of a silly little clip to get us started. This girl runs a blog called Maddie is Awkward, um, and she's going to teach us how to be awkward at a party. It's only about two minutes, so Socially enough. Enjoy. Fortunately, to be awkward um, at a party. So, I know, sorry, it just wasn't that good. Um, <laughs> let me just get this all set. Okay, so she was obviously taking it to a really extreme level, right? Most of us probably don't act that way at parties. But what happens when you go into a setting that you're not familiar with and you have to start interacting with people? How do you feel? Nervous. 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 You gotta feel it out at first, right? Um, does anyone like to go barreling into a party and just say, hey, I'm here, when you don't know anybody? No. What kind of approach do you take instead? You go in how? Shy. Shy. You're a little bit quiet when you go in until you figure out what's going on. Well, it's the same way when you come into this culture. If it's a new culture for you. Um, where are you from? You're from Morocco. If I went to a party in Morocco, I would be very uncomfortable. I would feel really out of place and like I didn't know what was going on. So our goal today is to talk a little bit about um, how we can be more comfortable here in socializing. So somebody who's from another country, tell me what socializing is like in your culture. How is it similar or different to the United States? It's different. It's different. How is it different? The language. The language. The clothes. The clothes. What do you wear to a party, for example? Our clothes. Yeah, about the, the, the party. Okay. You must be wearing good. Good clothes. Yeah. Not about with a gym or t-shirt or something like that. You have to wear nice clothes. Yeah. What do you guys wear to a party? Shorts. Shorts. You wear what you're wearing, Marquise? Marquise wears that right there. Okay. What else is socializing like in your culture that might be different from how it is here? Religion. Religion? So religion is involved. In what way? 
it's it's always a presence at gatherings. Everything's different. Yep. Music. music. Okay. Where are you from? Puerto Rico. What kind of music do you guys listen to at your parties? Spanish music. Spanish music. Okay. What's better, Spanish music or American music? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so things that we want to talk about today are what happens when you go to somebody's house. Raise your hand if in your culture you just show up at somebody's house uninvited. Like you can just go knock on their door to hang out. After you know them, you do? How do you usually get invited to somebody's house? They might text you. When you go to somebody's house for a visit, do you have to bring something? Yes. yes. Do you bring something? No. The first time you go somewhere. What do you bring in your culture when you go to someone's house? Food? Oh, a sweet dish. I want to live where you're from. Okay, they bring sweets? Um, what do you think here in the United States? Are you expected to bring something when you go to somebody's house? Some of you say yes and some of you say no. Eddie? If you, if you go for a meal, if there's going to be a meal or a party involved, you probably bring something. But when you just go to hang out with somebody, we don't have to bring anything. So if you're bringing stuff for a casual hangout, you might be spending more time cooking than you need to. How about when you come to school or you go to work? How do you dress? In whatever. In whatever. <laughs> What do you think that you should wear when you come to school? Proper clothes. What does that mean, Rachel? How you feel comfortable. How you feel comfortable. Yeah. You should definitely feel comfortable. Um, what about skirts? What if you feel comfortable with your skirt being way up here? If you like it. If you like it. No, see? <laughs> I feel comfortable in my pajama pants. Oh, Livia feels comfortable in her pajama pants. Should she wear them to school? How do you decide what you can wear to school? Oh, did you ever teach in your pajamas? No, okay. So um, the teacher maybe sets the mood. But still, you have to think about what is appropriate, right? So you need to wear things that are comfortable, but also things that aren't going to be offensive to anyone. What message does it give me as your teacher if you show up in your pajamas? You don't care. You're kind of sleepy and lazy, and you'd rather be in bed than in my classroom, right? In this, at the same time, should you dress like you're going to a club? No. Do people sometimes dress like they're going to clubs? Yes. <laughs> so why? Why should I not dress like I'm going to a club? Because, I'm sorry, what? Everyone, how they, how they think. Mm -hmm. yeah. What they would think about you. Yeah. Yep. So you need to keep yourself covered, right? When you are out, out in public at a school or a work setting, you need to be covered. And you need to have a skirt, you know, long enough that you can't see anything. And your clothes shouldn't be super, super tight. Because you want to give the impression that you are responsible and professional and that the reason that you're here is to learn, right? You can save those clothes for when you do go to the club. Who goes to clubs on weekends? Anybody in here? Interesting. Okay. And you don't want people question? looking at you for the wrong reason. You have a question? No, I said were you asking an honest I was asking an honest question. Yeah. Okay. Um, hold on a second. How about when we communicate with people? What do you call your teachers here? Well. Interesting question. What we do here in the United States is that we call people whatever they have told us to call them. So what, it, my class, what do you call me? Carolyn. But if I said to you, please call me Mrs. Kenny or please call me Professor Kenny or whatever, that's what you would need to call me. So you have to pay attention when somebody introduces themselves to you. So if I came up over here, I'm not gonna shake your hand while well, we've already hugged. And I say, hi, I'm Carolyn. What's your name? Livia. Livia. Now I can call her Livia, right? Once we've had that introduction, I can call her what she has told me that I can call her. 
Um, you should not assume that you can call somebody something that they haven't told you. And you also have to have kind of a certain formality when you're talking to teachers or people in authority. Raise your hand if you ever send an email to your teacher. Ever sent an email to your teacher? How do you start the email? Hi, hi. <laughs> okay, so we have to have a different level of formality with teachers and people in authority than we do with our friends. If you're writing to your friends or you're texting, you can be like, hey, right? What's up? When you're writing to your teacher, it has to have a greeting. Hello, Carolyn. Dear Carolyn. Dear Professor Manson. Whatever they've told you to call them. Then you explain yourself and you have to sign it. Thank you, sincerely, and your name. If you write to somebody in an authority figure and you write them an email that says, hey, here's my homework, and that's it, here that's considered rude because you're not speaking to them with a certain amount of respect. That's the language that we save for our friends, right? Um, I need a demo. You ready? Sure. Let's talk about physical space. Raise your hand in your country if it is customary to hug people or kiss them on the cheek when you see them. Raise your hand if you do those things. Raise your hand if you shake hands. Raise your hand if you do nothing. You just say, hey. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about physical space. So right now, are we standing at a comfortable distance from each other to have a conversation? How much space is between us? An arm's length. Yeah. That looks pretty good, right? Do you guys know what a hula hoop is? Yeah. What's a hula hoop? The thing you shake on your hip. Marquise is demonstrating for us. Yes. <laughs> that round hoop that you put around your middle and you try to keep it up, right? Um, if you can picture yourself with a hula hoop around you, you'll probably keep the right amount of space between you and other people. Have you ever experienced what we call a close talker? Yeah. What's a close talker? In your face. So Livia has a story to yes, share. Yes. This is Livia's story. Listen to her. When I first moved to this country, I'm from Brazil originally. Um, in Brazil, we hug and we're very touchy people, right? And so uh, when I would approach someone, I, you know, or talk to someone, I would be like very close. <laughs> and I noticed with my American friends that as I was speaking to them, they were walking backwards, you know, <laughs> trying to get away from me because, you know, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I was getting too close to them, and they weren't comfortable. So I would be talking to them, and they, I mean, we would start over there and end over there, you know, our conversation, because they weren't comfortable with. Why do we give people their space? Their personal space, but some people don't have a lot of concept of personal space. It's the same thing if you sit down on a bus or you sit down on the subway. If it's not too crowded, so, Imagine that this whole auditorium was empty, all empty except for Diane. And I came in and I was like, <laughs> how does she feel? Uncomfortable. I have an entire empty room and I've decided to sit myself right on top of her. We have to give each other breathing room, right? Makes me think of something. I'm setting a poor example of this today because I didn't want to miss this. But what about if you're sick? If you are sick, should you come to class? OK. It depends on how sick you are. Is that what you were going to say? If you have a terrible stomach bug, that means a stomach illness that makes you vomit, should you come to class? No. Please don't. OK? <laughs> We're really not all into sharing germs, OK? If you have a bad cold, should you come? It depends. You should, yes, thank you. You need to keep your space even more then. So I have a very bad cold right now. And I'm here, and I hugged Livia and shook her hand. But everybody else, I have kept my distance today. Yeah. So you can come if you have something really important to do. But you want to be careful about keeping your space, especially when you're sick, right? Let's talk about invitations. I have to tell you a story about a friend of mine. Is anyone here from the Philippines? Nobody. Is anyone from the Philippines? No. 
Do you say that in a different way in a lot of languages? No, maybe. No. Okay, so the Philippines. I had a friend from the Philippines, and we used to get together after work, a whole group of us. We would go out to a restaurant, and we often asked him to come with us. The first week, hey, Reg, we're going out to um, Sylvan Street. Do you want to come? And he was like, oh, no, no, no thanks. No problem. We went without him. The next week, we were going, Friday afternoon. I said, hey, Reg, you want to come to Sylvan Street? Oh, no, thank you. Well, the next week, I didn't bother to ask him. Why did I not bother to ask him? He kept saying no. He didn't want to go. Well, three months later, he told me that in his culture, someone has to ask you something three times before you can say yes. <laughs> so if I had asked him one more time, he would have said yes. Well, I didn't know this, so instead I was like, fine, you don't want to come with us? Don't come. And we went out without him for the rest of the semester. So what I'm saying is, here in the United States, you can say yes. If your culture is like that, when somebody invites you to do something, they're really inviting you. So if you want to go, say, sure, thanks, OK? At the same time, if you say you're going, you have to go. Um, raise your hand if in your culture it's polite to say yes when somebody asks you something, when somebody asks you to do something. Okay, so sometimes do you say yes even if you can't do the thing? You say yes so they feel good and then later you'll be like, oh, I can't do that. This is cracking me up. Because um, I used to organize volunteers in San Antonio and they were Mexican. And I, we were trying to clean out an elderly person's house one day. It was community service. And I had 21 kids tell me they were coming to clean up the house. And three showed up. <laughs> and I said, I can't clean this house out with three people. So I called everybody else on the list. And do you know what they all said? Oh, miss, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. So I told you that I could come. But I can't, actually. I have to do this, that, or the other thing. So you're allowed to say yes, but only say yes if you really mean it. Right? You're not going to make anybody feel better by saying yes and then not showing up. Um, let's talk about time. Are you on time? Yes. Sir. Really? Are you all on time all the time? No. Yes. Yeah. At school, you are. No, in your next day, I am on time. When I have enough time. You're always on time. Right. I can't. Because everybody is not on time. <laughs> exactly. If your friends in your country say, hey, do you want to come over tonight around like 8? What time do they really think you're going to show up? 9, 10? I can't even imagine. We had a group on our campus when I was in college who used to have shows. And the shows were supposed to start at 8. And they never started till 10. Because they were, it was also the Philippines, it was Filipino dancers. And in their culture, it was polite to show up very, very late. So where here in the United States is it OK to be late? Mm -hmm. Maybe if, well, we're going to talk about that. Maybe if you're, ta if you're hanging out with people from your culture who are expecting it. But if you're hanging out with Americans, Eddie just said, everyone shows up late to parties. How late do you show up? No. <laughs> Bailey shows up an hour or two late. Let's pretend um, that somebody is having a New Year's party. A lot of cultures celebrate New Year's. It's a big thing. So let's pretend there's a New Year's party, and you get an invitation, and it says that the party starts at 8. What time should you show up? No. No. <laughs> What time should you show up? 8.15 maybe, 8.30 at the latest. You don't want to be on time, exactly on time or early for a party. There's nothing worse than expecting guests at 8 o'clock for, for a party and someone shows up at 7.45. Because what's the problem? You're not ready, right? But there's a little window. For a party, it's maybe at the most a 30 minute window. For classes and appointments, is there any room for being late? None, right? You should be early if you can. And if you can't, at least on time. What? Oh, job, interviews. job interviews. Please be early. It's OK to be early for those. Right. 
Yes, you can be early for formal things like that. It's just social gatherings some, at somebody's house. Sometimes the host won't be ready. If it's for dinner, should you be late? Early. early. Or, this, we talked about this last time, remember this? What if you are meeting friends at a restaurant? But what if you're going to be late by accident? What should you do? Let them know. Have you ever been standing there waiting for somebody and waiting and waiting and they're not coming? Yeah. Well, you're all lucky in that there are cell phones all the time now. I used to sit and just wait for people. Right. Um, oh, we have two more things about this. Clothes. We talked about them for class. How do you know what to wear when you get an invitation to something kind of like a wedding or another major event? Formal. Do you need to wear a tuxedo? It depends. Right. Let's talk about the words. What does casual mean? Like this. I'm casual right now. Um, who else is casual right now? Brian, stand up. <laughs> Sorry, Brian, I knew you would. Oh, Greg, Greg, you do not want to stand up, I'm sure. But if you will, that would be great. Okay, Brian and Greg are wearing button-down shirts and either jeans or khakis. They look very appropriate for going to a casual gathering, okay? What if it says semi-formal? Bow tie. What do you wear? Yes. Okay, that's what we're going to talk about. What is semi-formal? A suit. Um, at least a shirt and tie for males. Sometimes a jacket, but that can depend on the weather. If it's very, very warm out, you can skip the jacket. What do women wear for semi-formal? A skirt or a dress. You shouldn't wear your jeans or your khakis, but you don't need to be in a ball gown. What's a ball gown? A fancy long dress. What if it says formal or black tie? Formal is a suit for men. Black tie means tuxedo. If you get an invitation that says black tie and you're a man, you are supposed to be wearing a tuxedo. What if you don't have a tuxedo? You rent one or you borrow one from a friend who might own one. What do females wear for formal or black tie? A fancy dress. Um, it doesn't have to be short or long. There's a lot of things in style right now, but you have to wear a dress. And you should be well, you know, have your hair done and looking nice for the gathering. You're usually late to those because you're getting ready. <laughs> I think I covered a lot of this already. Oh, this is important. Okay. In some cultures, the teacher is always right. Raise your hand if the teacher is always right where you're from. You do not ask the teacher something. You do not tell the teacher they are incorrect. Does that happen in some places? A few of you raised your hand. What about here? What do we do if we have a question or the teacher isn't right about something? Yeah, you can raise your hand and ask a question. Is it OK to ask questions? Do we want you to ask questions? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, because our goal is for you to learn. What if your teacher is wrong and you are pretty sure the teacher is wrong? What do you do? If I feel that it's wrong, I'll be like, yo, just give me cool and it's wrong or right, so I feel like they don't know. Uh huh. So I'll make sure that she has proof. How proof? Yeah. How do you ask for that politely? Yes. Excuse me. Me, I think like that, like that. Maybe she. She remembers. Yeah. Absolutely. You say excuse me, right? Or raise your hand, and you're not gonna just say you're wrong, right? Um, I think maybe there's a misunderstanding about this, or I think that that's not correct. If you start it with I think, you are giving the impression that the teacher could still be right. Maybe you're not, um, but that you want to bring it to their attention. Yep, you could ask them to show you how, you got, how they got something. Like if it's math class, how did you get that answer? There are polite ways to ask. 
But you should not just sit there quietly if you don't understand something. It's always okay to ask questions, as long as you do it in a polite way, raising your hand or saying, excuse me. I just realized something. I totally forgot. Uh-oh. Hold on. Do you need help? Nope. Oh, where's your athleticism about? <laughs> Look, how's my aim? Oh, you totally could have caught that. Did you answer yet? No. Okay. You did. And you did. And you guys did. Did you answer? Yes, you did. Yes, you said that you bring sweets places and I wanted to go. Okay, pretty much everyone's participating. Take one and pass it. Oh, I skipped you. Do you want one? Okay. I skipped you too. Did you want some? Okay. All right. You answered most of the time? Thanks, Bailey. Okay. Um, what if you need to bring your kids with you to class? Can you do that? No. You can't just drop them off at the daycare here. Um, if you need to bring a child with you, what are the rules? They need to be quiet, and you need to ask the teacher first. You need to make sure that it's okay with the teacher for your child to attend class with you. For example, I had a student last year who needed to bring their eight-year-old with them one, for two days. She sat quietly at the desk and drew or colored while we were having class. That's no problem. You can bring a baby that's very, like, asleep if you really have to. But should I bring my two-year-old twins who cannot sit still for one second? No, no probably not. No. So just making sure that you ask permission before you do that and that you only do it in a case of emergency. Right? Do you guys want to add anything? No, I will. It's fine. Okay. Oh. So raise your hand if you like babies. Little babies, you like them? And you want to run right up to somebody's little baby and be like, oh, and hold them? Who does that? Anyone? You, yeah? Okay, so in some cultures, you can just pick up somebody's baby. Like, it's no big deal. It's fine. Is that the case here? No. No. I can't tell you. When I had little babies and someone would just come and pick them up, I was like, oh, my gosh. What if you're sick? What if your hands aren't clean? Yeah, exactly. We're kind of germaphobes here. What does the word germaphobe mean? Paranoid about germs. We don't like germs. And we don't like strangers holding our children. So if somebody has a little baby or a little kid and you think they're really cute, do not just pick them up. You have to ask first. Is it okay if I hold your baby? And if the person says no, don't be offended. They probably don't let anybody hold their baby, right? But you, that was you? You said no? Always? <laughs> yeah. When I had my, my baby, I had a baby um, almost two years ago. And um, some, some people would come over to my house to, she was born in December, December 27th, so it was very cold, it was snowing outside, and some people would come to visit her, you know, in my house, and that was wonderful. But one person asked me to pick her up, and went like this, oh, can I hold her? And I said, no. <laughs> just told me that everybody at work was sick, oh. that she and all of her kids were sick, and now she wants to pick up my child, my newborn? I said yeah. no. Yeah. And I don't think she took it, you know, in a bad way, but uh, don't be afraid to say no if you don't feel comfortable, because after all, it's your baby, it's your baby's health, right? Yeah. Was that rude for saying no? No, I would have no. said no. I absolutely would have said no. Do you think she was rude? No. 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 Um, okay, so another thing is watching your kids. If you have kids, sometimes there are communities where everybody kind of watches the kids together, right? Your kids go outside to play, and just like whatever adult is out there is going to watch them. No big deal. Somebody's watching them. Is that the case here? No. 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 What do you have to do? You need to know where they are and what's going on all the time. Now, yeah. This just reminds me of, um, I had a couple who were my friends and they were Italian. Wait, here. In Europe. Hi, I was um, just saying that I had some Italian friends who had a baby and in Europe it's much more common to 
bring their children into bars and restaurants and kids. People are used to having kids, but in the United States, not so much. So they had their child with them. He was like two years old, and they just let him go. And he ran around the restaurant the entire time. And I was so embarrassed because everybody was looking at me. I'm like, not my kid. Not my kid. These crazy Italians. <laughs> So you have to watch your kids, right? Um, also, it, how many of you live in a neighborhood where other people do watch your kids? You used to. Anybody else? Yeah. So it's pretty nice, but what do you have to do? You have to take turns, right? I live in a neighborhood with 60 children. It's unbelievable. There are just kids everywhere. But there are a couple of people who send their kids out to play and don't check on them for hours and hours. So they're getting free babysitting from the rest of us. So you have to be fair to your friends. And if they're going to watch your kid, it's for you. You should do it for them, too. Make sure you're being polite, OK? Um, and when you're in other people's homes or public spaces, pay attention to what your kids are doing. If someone invites you over for dinner, should your kids go upstairs no. without being asked? No. no. Should they start opening things, drawers? and No. Right. You have to wait until you're invited to do things, right? And um, people don't appreciate when your kids just roam around on their own. Body language. This is something, yeah, Bailey. Do you want this? Look, I'm going to mic you because you told me you were answering. Here you go. Hi, guys. That's Bailey. I'm Bailey. Um, I have a question because. Here, like my mom and my parents, well, my family, we get to put our feet on the couch. Uh -huh. But my boyfriend, he's Puerto Rican. They don't get to put your feet on the couch because it's disrespectful. Mm. Is that all? Like, yeah, culture? I don't know. Raise your hand if it's okay to put your feet on the couch. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That is a great question about the body language. So let's talk about from the first minute that you go in someone's house. Do you take your shoes off? No, my house does. It, yes. it depends. You have to follow the lead of the host. If everybody in the house is wearing shoes, you can leave your shoes on. If everybody in the house has stocking feet or slippers, yeah. So in my house, for example, I, I don't wear shoes in the house, you know? But when some, I, I think it, it, it's embarrassing to me to have to ask somebody that's coming into my house to take their shoes off. Yeah. They should see all the shoes. <laughs> lined up by the door. Lined up by the door and, and see that I'm not wearing anything and take their shoes off, you right. know? Um, I'll offer them slippers or something that they can put on, but not their shoes because they're bringing all that stuff from the street. and but. What should I, it's always, I, I never know what to do. Is it okay for me to ask them to take their shoes off? Yes. Will they think that I'm being rude or something? I no. Know. I think it's your house. Like, so I think the whole point is that you have to follow what they're doing in the house where you are. So if, like she said, if they're not wearing shoes, you should notice. So the number one rule is that you need to be observant when you go into people's houses, right? So, yeah. Uh, our uh, my kids teacher uh -huh. they, when they visit me at house they ask me we can take our shoe they ask no? yeah they ask yeah i don't tell them take or no they're asking me before so yeah. if somebody asks you you can give them the answer that you're comfortable with in your house but livia said is it being rude that i ask them to take off their shoes no i mean you don't want to attack them as soon as they walk in the door. I'll take off their shoes! Right? But if you can tell that they're not going to take their shoes off, you can ask them politely. Um, in our house, we don't usually wear our shoes. Would you mind taking them off? But she said she offers them slippers or a pair of like house socks to put on. That's a nice thing to do if you're going to ask people to take them off. Have something there that they can put on. Um, but putting your feet on the furniture. Back to Bailey's question. Should you put your feet on the furniture? You're used to it. So it all depends on what they're doing. The whole rule here is to follow the lead of your hosts. In my house, sure, we put our feet on the furniture. But I wouldn't do it in somebody else's house if I didn't know. You have to wait until you see what they're doing, and you've been there a few times. The first time you go to somebody's house, even if they're putting their feet on the furniture, I wouldn't. Yeah. Maybe I accepted my kids and my husband. 
but uh, I bought a trip to someone else. Oh. Yeah, make this uh, in my house. So did you hear what she said? She doesn't mind if her family puts their feet on the furniture, but she doesn't want other people to. But at the same time, it might be a good idea then that you guys don't put your feet on the furniture when other people are over. Because they're going to follow your lead. So if they see everybody putting their feet up, they might put their feet up. And if that makes you uncomfortable, you could always not do that when they're there. What else about body language? Um, it really does. It's, it lets you see people's emotions. So if I am in class, pretend I'm in class, and I'm doing this, what does that say? I'm tired or I'm bored, right? What if I sit back in my chair and I put my feet up? Whoa, I'm being a little too comfortable, right? This is not my house where I can put my feet on the furniture. How do we need to ha hold our bodies in a class or at a job? Sit up. Sit up professionally. You need to sit up and look like you're paying attention. What if your cell phone rings during class? Should you be like, hey, hey, oh, sorry, and then walk out? Is that what you should do? Yeah. You step out and then answer it. Exactly. If it's very important. What am I going to think if I walk out into the hall and I hear you discussing your plans for the weekend? You're going to get in some trouble because that's not polite. Your focus when you're here is class. Should you text during class? No. no. Your phone should pretty much be away unless you know that there might be an emergency. And you should always have it on silence, right? To make sure that you're being polite to everybody around you and to the teacher. Um, what other kinds of body language do we use? Facial expressions. Raise your hand if you accidentally use facial expressions. So I have to tell you about my mom. My mom went for a job interview. And to tell the truth, she hadn't decided if she really wanted the job. She was interviewing to see if she got it and then she would make a decision. But she went into the interview and apparently written all over her face with her facial expression was that she didn't care about the job. So much so that in the middle of the interview, the interviewer said, um, I'm sorry, Pam, but do you actually want this job? My mom was horrified. She had no idea that her face was giving it away. But it was that clear that they asked her. That's very embarrassing. So you have to try to be aware of what your face is doing as much as you can. Poker face. What's a poker face? Yeah, but you also want to smile, right, if people are being friendly. Yeah. Um, I also need to tell you about my Bulgarian students. I love this. Is anyone from Bulgaria? Yeah. I know, but try. What does an eye roll mean? What's this? Whatever. I don't care. It's very dismissive. Do you know the word dismissive? You are not important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but this is what I, this story is fun. What does this mean? What does this mean? So in Bulgaria, this means no. And this means yes. It's one of only two countries in the world where it is backwards. And I had these great students, Kostadin and Dimitar. They were from Bulgaria. They were brothers. They still are, I would imagine. And they went to somebody's home, and they were talking. And the host asked them if they wanted some water. And they did this. Oh, no, sorry. They did this, and nobody ever brought them the water. And like 10 minutes later, they said, um, excuse me, could we have the water, please? She goes, you said you didn't want any. They said, what do you mean? And she said, well, you did this when I asked you if you wanted any water. And that meant yes for them. So you have to be careful with signals in another country that mean something you're not expecting. Is this impolite in any country? Is this rude? I think it's rude in some places. What does it mean here? OK, got it. Okay. Any other body language motions that mean different things in different places? Huh? If it's good, and 
Mm -hmm. Oh, see, it has another meaning. So you have to be careful that your body language and signs don't mean something else where you are, right? Almost time for questions. Oh, this is a good one. We talked about homes already, but this applies to teachers' offices too. What if you go to see your teacher and the door is closed? Knock. Knock. What if they don't answer? Come back later. Come back later. <laughs> yeah, or your advisor. Sometimes when people knock on the door and nobody answers, they just open the door. Yeah. Or they keep knocking. Guess what? We heard you knock, <laughs> right? So if you knock and nobody answers, you need to go away and wait. Or if it's something really important, you can wait a little while. You could try to call them. Um, but you can't just walk into somebody's office uninvited or when they haven't answered the door. Because that'll be a good way to get the teacher kind of aggravated and probably not interested in helping as much. Yeah. Um, and, and please don't take this the wrong way, but a lot of times people walk into my office and see that I don't have anybody in my office with me and they'll say, are you busy or are you doing anything? And, and then to me, it's kind of a little bit insulting because the fact that I don't have five people in my office with me doesn't mean that I'm not doing anything. You know, I'm working. And the same thing goes for your teachers, I'm sure. You know, they're in their office. Office hours obviously are to be there for you and help you and talk to you. But they're probably also doing something in the computer or, you know, preparing their class or grading. I mean, the grading. And so don't assume that, you know, the fact that the person is by him or herself means that they're not doing anything. Thank you. It's like the design is. Yeah. Um, I also want to talk about giving people space, not just personal space, but space in private places like a doctor's office or a pharmacy. Here in the United States, we don't ask people what's wrong with you. So if somebody tells you that they have to go to the doctor, unless it's one of your very close friends, you don't say, oh, what's wrong? Because they might not want to tell you. And when you're in a doctor's office in the waiting room, you have to stay back. You know there's usually like a window where you check in. You don't want to be right behind someone. Eddie, what? You have to stay like five people. Yeah, you have to stay back. You don't want to be right on top of somebody listening to everything that's going on. Um, and the same thing at a pharmacy when people are getting medications. We keep that all private and you don't want to ask somebody, what, what, oh, what are you taking? It's very forward and considered very rude. If they're your close friend and they choose to tell you, that's fine. But you don't want to ask them. How about when you get grades back on something in class? No, you wait until they show you. Yes. You don't go, what'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? You don't ask. Don't do it. You have to, if they want to show you, they will, but it's really not your business. Right? It's not your business. Okay, so we have 20 minutes left, and last year we had a lot of questions. Things that I didn't cover about situations that you were uncertain in. Does anyone have any questions? Yep. Because it just seems more and more every day in America that the, um, the language is becoming more abbreviated. Uh huh. And that might be kind of confusing. Like using slang or using contractions or using. That's a great question. So if you're communicating with people and they're using a shorthand or shorter versions of words or slang, it can be very difficult to understand, right? So when you're speaking in a class setting or in a work setting, what kind of English should you be using? Proper English, Proper English right? Uh, well, I get papers sometimes where students have used texting language in their paper. Yes. So that's a great question. So when you're writing a paper for school or sending an email to a teacher or doing a homework assignment, you have to use regular English. U is not spelled by the letter U. It's spelled Y-O-U, <laughs> right? Uh, C is S-E-E, -E, not the letter C. So make sure, oh, and we don't put emoticons in essays. <laughs> What's an emoticon? I just taught Diane how to use emoji on her phone. 
Give her a round of applause. She's using emoji. So you don't put those in your paper. I don't want a smiley face in your paper. I'm glad you're happy. I'm a happy person too, but don't put it in your paper. Any other questions? You have a question? Okay, also, um, for those of us whose first language is not English, it's okay if you don't understand what somebody's saying to ask them to repeat yeah. or slow down. Uh, or slow down. You know, especially in class, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, but they can't get offended either at the same time. Right. Because a lot, that's a lot of misconception right there. Because a lot of people be like, can you say, you know, I didn't understand it. They take like. Right. I guess that goes. Yeah. Well, like, so if. Also, at the same time, because most of us yeah. have an accent when we speak English, it may be hard for English speakers to understand what we're saying sometimes. So if they ask us to repeat, don't get offended either. It doesn't mean that anything else but just that they can't understand what you're saying, that you have to repeat it again. You know, so. Thanks. Have you got to repeat it? No. That was yeah. good. Anything else? Yeah. Do you want the microphone? Okay, he doesn't want the microphone, so everyone, he doesn't need it. Project, project. Oh, that was good. Say it that loud. Just speak loudly so I can hear you. Like I was saying, when you don't understand something, you should have to teach it. But sometimes, like, people, they start talking English, they don't ask because they're shy. I used to be that person, I used to be shy a lot and don't ask. But now, I'm more comfortable last because I you know I kinda of know now. But you know, some people that are shy they don't ask. Because they gonna think they're gonna make fun of them or something. You know, that's that's that used to be me. And has it made a big difference for you since you started asking? Yeah. Start asking. No one was asking because I'm not asking yeah. like I feel comfortable now. Right. So just don't I can say to you guys just don't feel, you know, shy just do it. You know, just ask. ask. And what if somebody does laugh? If somebody does what? Oh, they shouldn't be. I mean, if they do, what should you do? Ignore them. <laughs> Slap them. No. Um, you should ignore them. Really. I mean, if you're asking a question because you don't understand, do you have a different answer to that? No. Oh. You do. Yeah, because Slap I, them. I would actually, I wouldn't ignore it. Actually, I would address it. I mean, but oh, as a teacher, I mean. But as a student. Would you As address a student, it? I would address yeah. it? Yes, because it's happened to me a few times. Mm. I've been in this country for 15 years, and there were times that I was I wasn't laughed at, but I um, I felt like I was being looked at differently, you know. So and I addressed it right away with the person. But I'm a very outspoken person, mm -hmm. um, so it was easy for me to do it. It may not be easy for you, but I would highly recommend you you sticking up for yourself, you know and in educating that person, because that goes for any culture, really. Um, <coughs> as, as I had moving to the United States about the American culture, and Americans, I'm sure, have a lot of misconceptions about your cultures. So just don't take offense to it, but um, because it's not gonna do anything for you, try to educate the person. Say, really, it's, it's not really like that, this is how it is, you know? Yeah. And I think it would do a lot more for you if you if you try it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I have a couple of things. Okay. Um, like when people talk to me with like different accents, I like it. But sometimes when people say things that I kind of understand, well, I know what they're trying to say. I laugh, but not because it's funny, because it's cute. Okay. Say it. I think it's cute. I'm like, oh, you should say it. Yeah, that. just tell them that. Yeah. I'm not laughing. I'm just cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you can suggest it in a nice yeah. way. You know, if you're already having a friendly conversation, that's something helpful that you're doing. Um, but as long as you're explaining yourself, yeah, that's what I makes a big like difference. Uh, right. <coughs> So yep. being here, I seen all Puerto Ricans were Mexicans, and then oh. they had explained, no, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, and then they explained, I was like, oh, and then I thought Dominicans were just African Americans, and they explained wow. that too. Right. So, like, so many things. Like, like, 
Bailey is making a really good point, which is not assuming that you know where somebody is from or what language they speak by what they look like, right? When I go uh, to Mexican, when I go to Mex I used to live in California, and every time there's a lot of Mexicans in California, and so every time I would go to a restaurant with my husband, and he's tall and blondish, he looks American, I guess. I shouldn't say that because he, he could be from anywhere. <laughs> But they would look at me and start talking to me in Spanish without knowing. I could be American. I could be right. any from anywhere in the world. But they would automatically assume, because of my looks, I guess, I could be from any different. I've been told that I could That's be from exactly. India or, you know, Morocco or whatever. Just don't assume. You know, Ask. It's the best way to go, I think. People do that to me. I'm black and white, and they start speaking to me in Spanish. I'm like, I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> and also, yeah. Even though I am Mexican American, there's symptoms, and even though since I speak both languages, sometimes I get confused with, with English and sometimes with other with Spanish. So you, you mix them up? Do you what? think in Spanish? I do think, think I both. Do you translate in your head and then speak? Sometimes it could be hard for me to, to understand when, when I speak, and, like, um, how am I supposed to say to, to others that they don't know English and some others to, to they don't know Spanish? Oh, yeah. So, and some of the common words that are used. Yes. And they can have many meanings in English. And one word can have five different meanings. So. Right. So it's, it, yeah, what, um, when you're feeling confused or like you can't find the right word, you, you can always ask. And that it brings me to class time, too. Um, if you are from a culture where you don't talk in class, it's a good idea to have a conversation about that with your teacher at the beginning of the semester. Because if I know that somebody is un unfamiliar with or uncomfortable with speaking out in class, I won't assume that they're just not paying attention or that they're feeling shy. I will understand that it's a cultural difference and try to be understanding and help them to come out of their shell. Do you know that phrase? Come out of your shell means to not feel shy. If you think of a turtle in their shell like this, if they come out, their head is up, right? So if you feel shy, you will. Just takes time. You have to be patient with yourself. Anything else? Questions? Yeah. This just reminds me of um, differences in education with men and women combined in the classrooms. I had oh, yeah. a student once, and I don't remember the country she was from, but she had never been in a classroom before with men until she came to my class. And usually I am sensitive about these things, but I wasn't thinking, and we broke into groups, and I put her with three guys. Oh. And she was fine, and then she came up to me after class, and she said, I have never spoken to a man in school before. And I said, oh, I'm a really bad teacher. <laughs> I did that. It's, it's you know, I mean, do you feel, like, comfortable being with men and women? Have you experienced anybody feeling uncomfortable with being with them? A woman. A Teacher? You absorb more. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess because I'm a single, I have like my, just my mom. Yeah. All oh, yeah. So you're used to that. Let's hope that when you become a husband, it stays that way. <laughs> Take directions from a woman. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Um, should we talk about the question that we had? It was a big question last year about funerals yeah. and wakes. Yes, please. So different cultures have very different customs and rituals when somebody dies, when somebody passes away. And it can be a very uncomfortable situation if you don't know what you're supposed to do. So, yes, anytime. Um, is there anyone here who's, whose culture and customs around someone passing away are very different from the United States? Yes, what do you do in your culture when somebody dies? You cry loudly, right? Just going on and on, okay? 
And how do you eat? No. Some places they eat a lot, though. Yeah. yeah we, we eat. Uh, we make uh, uh, in our uh, city exactly in our city. Uh -huh. We don't we don't make uh, the food. The neighbor or uh, the friend make for us the food. Friends make you food. If uh, the woman, if the husband dies, the woman will in the wife four months and ten days. Four months and ten days. And she can meet the different man, just to, to the relationship. After four months and ten days. Yeah. And she wow. Can, uh, dress well and uh, put his makeup and, and she can go out. But for four months and ten days, she only wears white yeah. and, and stays, stays home. Yeah. And do people bring her food for that entire time? Yeah, no, just, just one period. Just uh, okay. She can go to work. She can go to work, mm -hmm. but uh, she has to wear uh, white. White for it's a religion thing. Yeah. Just like that. From from religion. It is called Ida. Ida. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, someone else was going to say something. I saw a hand. Yeah. Like they say, um, get them green. They dress white, but in Cape Verde, they dress all black. Black. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it, it all depends, too, on who the person is and what your relationship is to them. So, for example, when you said there's a lot of crying, I've heard that a lot, that there's a lot of crying and loud crying. One sec. Um, here in the United States, you wouldn't do that unless the person was very close to you. For example, if your um, co-worker, somebody you work with, if their parent died or passed away, you would probably go to the wake. Do you know what a wake is? So it is usually an afternoon or evening at a funeral home where the family all goes and you go to express your condolences. What are condolences? Sympathy and respects. And you go and you tell them that you're sorry that the person has died and you spend a little time there and then you leave. You not loudly, and you don't you don't cry unless you were close to the person. Is usually how it goes. If it's somebody you haven't met before, it's polite to go if they're a relative of someone you're with a lot. But it would be unusual for you to be very upset unless you knew the person. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. No, when you're finished. When I'm finished, I was also going to say about clothing. Um, we do not necessarily wear black to awake. You need to wear respectful clothes, and, and usually a dark color. But unless you are um, a very close relative of the person who has died, we don't typically wear black anymore. So you know, I might wear a gray skirt and a sweater when I went to a wake. And after the wake, usually the next day, if there's, depending on the religion, there might be a funeral. And you don't have to go to the funeral if you're not close to the person. So. Like a coworker, for example, their, their relative, you would want to go to the wake, but you wouldn't necessarily have to go to the funeral. If they, yeah. I was just uh, thinking of what Patricia said, and I remember going to a friend of mine, his husband died, and he was, she was, they were both Cape Verdean Americans. From <coughs> and I went to the funeral, and oh my God, it was so emotional, and she was sobbing and sobbing, and I was just like crying. I never met the guy, but it was awful. So sad, but a lot of times in this culture, there's an expectation that you kind of control your emotions in public. So I mean, I would cry if it were somebody close to me, but I would try not to. So sometimes people think, oh, Americans don't have that feeling, but it's that you don't, you don't really, control, you don't express it so much. But that's very, very true what you're saying yeah. because I've always been my entire life a very emotional person, cry for everything, anything, really. <laughs> 
coming to America and meeting my husband. My husband is American. And there's nothing wrong with, with not being over emotional, you know. Um, he never cries for anything. I think he cried when my daughter was born, and that was it. <laughs> our daughter, our daughter. Um, but I never said cry. He cried. It was weird. He cried when we when we got married. I was like, why are you crying? <laughs> are you regretful? <laughs> Just very. I mean, he never cries, right? So when we get in the car to go to the reception, he's bawling. Like, what is wrong with you? Oh my God! But anyway, but, but I understand. It was very hard for me to understand because every time we would argue or something, I was like, <laughs> and you'd be like, "Why are you crying? You know, it's really not a big deal." And today, I'm a completely different because I am. I think I learned how to control my emotion, and that's what it is. It's it's nothing but just a different way of looking at it. You know. Uh, yes. And then you, and then you. Yeah. I don't cry so much, but when I cry, when uh, the time go and uh, I, I have, uh, I had a problem, big problem, and I don't found some someone to help me. I remember if my my father is alive, he hit me. Oh. Why I, I cry? The memories. Yeah. When I cry. I need my father to help me. Mm -hmm. But uh, when he died, I don't cry too much. More. After, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry about your dad. Right. One sec. Um, over here, you had your hand up. In, in my, the Puerto Rico, um, me as a person, you know, when my uncle died uh, last year, he, he got he got killed, uh -huh. and I did a song for him. Wow. So in Puerto Rico, like, the, the person like the rap popular in the, in the place. No, it, it, that is if you want to, you can do a song for it. To celebrate them. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, somebody over here? You forgot. <laughs> Eddie? And also, um, it, it's not so much like you were saying, you know, you used to cry a lot. It's not so much in <laughs> different um, countries and stuff. It's also a gender thing. Like, not, don't get it wrong. Listen, I'm not No, no, it's fine. But, but, as, but as, a, as a young child, you know, as a boy, they, your, your father kind of teaches you not to cry, like, suck yeah. up, be a man. And, and as, as no, but I'm saying, like, your father kind of teaches his son to, to kind of suck it up and be a man about it. But if you're, like a, like, a boy growing up, you know, from just a mother, you have kind of more of a sensitive side because your mother, you know, like... That is a good I, point. So, like, my mother was always there to me and stuff, and, like, I, I have, you know, like, people think, as a man, I'm supposed to be, like, cold and, like, emotionless, but I'm like, I got feelings, too, like, damn. And you have daughters. Yeah, and... I mean, I, I display it to my kids and stuff, and like, I'm not gonna get mad if my kids are crying about something happening. You know, I'll talk right. to them about it, explain it to them, but I'm not gonna be like, suck it up and stop crying. Right. Yeah, but it's so funny that now that we have a baby, now every time she starts crying for really no apparent reason, I'll say, stop crying, what are you crying for? <laughs> <laughs> Because she's daddy's little girl. I know. That's just how my kid does it. They like manipulate you to do anything. Yeah. Ah. That's Bailey. Yep. If you go to somebody's house, like, you don't eat that. Oh, oh, good. Oh, you've given us something for our last five minutes. Right. And as Americans, we really, we have our certain, yes. <laughs> Pizza. You can always say you're allergic to it. Yeah. No. I, no. I mean, if you really Because then they'll be worried that it's dangerous, and they might take it off the table. I mean, if you really can't do it, I would think that it's always a good idea to try it. I mean, you have to, you know? Yeah. But if you really, 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 really can't, then say, I'm sorry, I'm allergic to no, it. I'm talking, like, some That's what I do. Scottish people, they eat, like, lamb thighs or something like right. that. Right. That's something yes. I'm not going to try, but rice, like, I got used to it, but it still takes time. Yeah, nobody's allergic to it. So here's the thing. You should keep this in mind, too, when you have people over to your house, like Bailey is talking about. In some cultures, the host or hostess always serves the plate. In my house, we put the bowls in the middle of the table, and everybody serves themselves what they want. Yeah. 
So those are two totally different situations. If you have the opportunity to serve yourself, you should only take the things you like. Nobody is expecting you to take something from every single bowl. They're expecting you to take the things that you like and you're going to eat so you don't waste it. But if they put something on your plate that you don't like and you really, really don't like, sometimes you can just not eat it. Um, and other times if they ask you, don't you, know, don't you like it? Oh, I'm f you can say I'm full too if you eat everything else on your plate. Oh, thank you, I've had enough, right? Um, but you have to be polite about it. It's, it's difficult to say, I don't like that. But also the, the host or the hostess, if you're inviting somebody over to your house, it's, it's polite to ask them. Yes. What do you like? Ahead of time, if you're cooking for a bunch of people, uh, it's polite to ask ahead of time, you know, if anyone is allergic to anything or if there's anything that they don't eat for whatever reason and make sure you don't cook that because then you're just going to make everybody uncomfortable. And also, making sure that your guests know what they're eating, if you think it might be something that they could be allergic to or really dislike or have a cultural reason not to eat. When my brother was eight, his best friend lived next door and they were vegetarians. Maybe he was even younger, maybe like six or seven. And my brother was having a snack and he was having crackers and pepperoni and cheese. And he offered it to the kid and neither of them realized it was meat, like pepperoni, they're little, it's just something you put on a pizza. So we fed this boy meat and he wasn't supposed to eat any um, but they didn't realize so just making sure that your company is aware of anything that you think might be a problem yeah I did that with my friend I didn't know she was an all beef pork but I was like trying to give her hot dogs and stuff yeah she's like I can't I was like I made it take it oh like, yeah and then she explained it. I was like oh this place is amazing right <laughs> okay are we I think we're done yeah anything else before we go um, please take more candy on your way out because I really don't want to bring this home. And all of you. That's awesome. Um, this is really helpful, and I think you really are helping each other and sharing all these <laughs> things, your different cultures with each other and helping you coping with being here in America. You know, it's a, it's a difficult thing. You know, when we go to different countries, it's very hard for us to know what to go. I also want to thank these guys because it was great. Class. Yay, class. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, thank you for coming. So. Please take more candy. My class. Bye.